Hi everyone, Jesse back with another Humble Fungus uh, helpful video. Ooh, it's almost a title. Um, my name is Jesse Noller. I am one of, I'm a founder and co-owner of the Humble Fungus, which is a full service mushroom farm and cultivation supply uh, place here in Lafayette, Colorado. Beside me, you can see our dark tent, it's cool. Anyways, this video is what I hope to be a relatively quick breakdown on the fruiting chamber. I get a lot of questions and I actually got a lot of requests to break down sort of like optimal fruiting condition uh, conditions and it depends. So let me, um, let me give you some science and some theory and my history. So my history is I'm an engineer. I'm a computer engineer and a systems engineer. My background is large complex distributed systems. Um, when I got started growing, one of the first things I started doing is cross-pollinating knowledge from my background, having done a lot of various things throughout the years and merging that. So wireless sensors, data analytics, and things like that. Well, fast forward, I end up with a couple of greenhouses, some indoor grow, indoor grow tents, growing vegetables, plants, house plants, everything. And what I started to realize is a good example is cannabis growers. So I live in Colorado where it's legal to own and smoke cannabis. And um, there's a lot of uh, offers here on Craigslist and OfferUp for indoor grow setups. So tents like these and cannabis grow lights and things like that, you can get dirt cheap online. So when I started growing, it was in the dead of winter. Uh, obviously, if you're trying to start um, a vegetable garden, uh, you can't do that uh, indoors relatively well. So I went to Craigslist and I searched for indoor greenhouse and grow tent and everything else like that. Search Amazon, you can find them. <laughs> they're dirt cheap and they're everywhere. Uh, so I picked that up. I actually picked up a bunch of used gear, um, grew a bunch of stuff and it failed a bunch. Uh, I grew a bunch of fungus, grew some mold, um, so on and so forth. All of this is to say, oh, and I also grew a bunch of stuff outdoors in inside and outside of uh, greenhouses. Now I've grown mushrooms over the past year indoors. I've grown them outdoors and I've also grown them in tents, greenhouses and things like that. One of my fundamental uh, guiding principles with um, growing mushrooms is in captivity. Now, uh, let me uh, separate two things. When I am going to talk about our fruiting chamber and growing mushrooms, I'm talking about growing and uh, cultivating mushrooms in captivity. Growing them outdoors, meaning even in your yard, you can do that by accident and you can do it intentionally by throwing mushroom spawn all over the place and mushrooms will pop up. I've had morels in my yard. I've had uh, oyster mushrooms in my yard. Uh, all sorts of things. So a fungus's natural habitat is outdoors. It is in the soil. Um, and these, it is very, very low to the ground. It is underneath the canopy of trees. It's in the grass, it's under bushes, it's in the shade, so on and so forth, right? So we have an environment when we cultivate mushrooms indoors. It is a couple of things. It is kind of warm, but I'll get into the temperatures. But let's say it's in the 70, it's in the 68 to 74 degree Fahrenheit range, right? That's warm, right? And uh, it's moist, right? You've got to have a lot of humidity. Uh, you've got to have some light, not a lot, um, not a lot, and not UV light. And I'll talk about that briefly. Uh, so we have an enclosed environment that is humid and warm. This environment can grow two things exceedingly well. Mushrooms and fungi and mold. Black mold, trypanosis, uh, 
trichoderma, uh, blue green mold, penicillin, God knows. Like, mold loves those conditions. So, your number one enemy when growing mushrooms is mold and contamination. Second, fungus gnats, but I'll. Um, so, you have an environment that you're trying to build and you're trying to set up that is really, really, really fundamentally grow, uh, good at growing two things, mushrooms and mold. So, that's guiding principle number one. Guiding principle number two is how do we simulate the environment uh, that a mushroom would grow in the wild as closely as possible, but without growing everything that also grows in the wild. So fungus gnats, uh, mold, uh, you name it, right? We want to grow clean, we want to grow sterile, right? So that gets us to the fruiting chain. But let's also talk about sterility for a moment. When you see our videos and you see our grain prep videos and you see us uh, making fruiting blocks and things like that, there's a reason why we have to be super sterile. Go back to the guiding principle. We can grow two things, mushrooms and mold. Our sterile procedures are only because A, we have to, cons we have to combat a tent that is humid and warm and moist, it's got mushrooms growing and fungus and everything else like that. We have to keep things sterile because otherwise everything is gonna get contaminated, it's gonna get sick, we're gonna have a mold problem and our insurance company's gonna fire us. Easy peasy. That's why sterile technique matters so much in production places. That and we're growing people's food and medicine, right? So, mold and, mold and mushrooms. Let's talk about the tent first. What do you need for your fruiting chamber? You need an enclosed environment. This can be a closet where you put plastic up on the walls to keep the humidity in. It can be um, a plastic tub like those up there. Cut some holes in them, put some microporte tape, mono tub. Uh, it can be a jar, it can be a bowl turned upside down over whatever you're growing. Uh, you need an enclosed space. It can be an old bedroom, it can be your basement. Let's talk about a greenhouse, right? An indoor greenhouse or grow tent. So most, most of you are going to be familiar with a Martha setup, right? And a Martha setup is basically a Martha Tech setup where you have an indoor greenhouse that kind of looks like this. And it's got four to five shelves, Right? And you set this up in a spare bedroom, in your closet, your living room, wherever you're growing your plants or your mushrooms, right? And there's a couple of parts of the Martha that you need to understand, right? So down here is a tray of perlite. Okay. And over here is a humidity probe. And here is a temp probe, right? So these are the basic components. Oh, and a humidifier, pump, sorry. So now there's a humidifier. The humidifier pumps in moisture, and then you can have uh, your house lights, or you can have a digital LED or lighting. I'm not gonna talk about in this case. All right, so these are usually transparent. So light train, uh, passes through and you put your mushroom blocks and things inside of the tent, keeps it nice and moist, right? Okay, can you grow mold in this setup? Yes, but let's break down these parts real fast. This is a clear plastic tent. That is going to have your best chance of keeping it clean and keeping mold off of it. Cloth or anything porous is not gonna do well. All of these tents may be cloth, but they are lined so that they are not super porous. They don't absorb moisture well. Uh, this is plastic, it's not gonna absorb moisture. So, part number one, you need to not use anything porous. Porous is bad. All right, number two, humidity. Mushrooms, or fungi, do not drink the water in the air. In other words, um, 
when they're growing, when you see them growing and knitting together in their mycelium and then the fruiting bodies pop up, all of that is coming from the fruiting block. It's coming from the substrate. Um, that substrate uh, shrinks over time as the mushrooms grow. So why does it need to be humid? Let's pause for a second and talk about the conditions on a forest floor. So you've got a bunch of trees, and then you've got some underbrush, and then you've got the forest floor, and you've got a bunch of dead leaves and things like that. Then you've got soil. In between the soil and these dead things, living in between all of this, would be the mycelium, would be the fungus, and it would create pins and consume this decaying material and push pins out. Now, if you take a bunch of wet leaves and sticks and things like that, mush them up, spread them all over the ground, it makes a couple of conditions. Number one, it makes it warm because they are now composting, they are decaying, that generates heat. So this area is warm. Number two, it traps humidity, right? Um, humidity is super critical. Here's the other thing. Um, it's high CO2. There's not a lot of oxygen down here, right? So something you have to understand, mushrooms or fungi, um, they don't consume uh, or they don't put out oxygen. Right? They're not plants. They don't do uh, photosynthesis. In other words, they don't consume carbon dioxide and put out oxygen. Uh, mush, uh, fungi are like us. They pull in oxygen and output CO2. Right. So here is a high CO2 environment. And so you've heard the terms pins. This is where pin scent usually occurs. In this high CO2, super moist environment, right? Um, and then the fruiting body comes up. Now, here at this level in the forest, um, you've still got a lot of moisture because it's all trapped under the underbrush and everything else like that. It's dark. There's little uh, pinpricks of light coming in here and there, right? But it's moist, kind of warm, kind of cool. It's warmer as you get closer to the soil, but as the mushroom pops up, it'll, it'll climb. So, um, that's what the conditions are for a fungus to fruit, roughly. So, what does that mean? It means that, well, let's, let's pause for a second. If a fungus and consumes oxygen, puts out CO2, this has to have lots of oxygen exchange. In other words, you have to be pulling the CO2 out of this somehow in order to allow the fungus to breathe. So that's number one. But Pinset wants high CO2. We'll talk about that in a different environment, how to optimize your Pinset. Um, but anyways, you, in order for a fungus to be happy in this environment, it's going to have to have a lot of air. Right, and so the first thing we do is we've got this nice greenhouse set up and the bottom is open, right? The bottom isn't airtight and so air can flow in and out of the bottom. And it's raised up a little bit. So you get a little bit of air exchange this way. We'll talk more about air exchange in a minute. Let's go back to humidity. They like humidity, but they don't drink it, right? So what does that tell you? They love their humidity, but they're not using it. Uh, they're not using ambient humidity to uh, generate energy or to stay alive. What it is, is it keeps the fruiting body moist and luscious, right? That it's gonna still grow if it gets dried out. It might, the fungus might say, well, it's too dry and I'm gonna stop. That's how you get terminal, uh, terminates, uh, terminations, sorry. Um, but they like moisture, but they're not drinking. So they like moisture, but they're not drinking. And we have an environment that can grow mushrooms and mold. 
What does that tell you? Mole likes extremely high amounts of water, right? Basically, if you have standing water sitting in a corner, you're probably gonna grow mold, right? So, we have to find a humidity level that balances these two needs, right? To keep the fruiting body nice and humid and to um, keep down mold. So, common wisdom is to have your humidifier hooked up to a humidity controller set to say 70 to 80 percent relative humidity right so that means that there's 70 percent moisture in the air, roughly 70 to 80 percent pause there for a second 70 to 80 percent i don't want to go into a rat hole on how to calculate your relative humidity but you have to factor in temperature, right? So if you've got a relative humidity set to 70, but it's warm in your environment, that relative humidity is gonna be much, much higher. So you've gotta measure it. So off my soapbox. Anyways, this is set to 70 to 80%. Um, me, personally, I've got our fruiting chamber set to about 70 to 75%. Here's why. Number one, uh, we have air exchange happening on our tent, right? We've got a blower pulling air out. So, um, and the temperature in here is highly variant, right? It's, uh, it's warm during the day and cool at night. So what that means is that the relative humidity due to temperature fluctuations like that may start at 70%, which is what the humidifier is set to. But throughout the day, it could go up and it will go down. Right? That's intentional. So I set ours to 75% relative humidity right now. Now we may lower this over time uh, or amp it up depending on what's going on. So our humidifier and our controller is set to 75%. This range, 70 to 80%, the higher you go, the more humidity you add the more likely your contamination and your mold problem. The more water you have in this environment, the more likely you are to have serious issues. Um, so, if you've got this environment, you've got it set to 70 to 75%, and that's how, why we have it set this way, right? We could put it up to 80%, but A, we'd run out of water in the humidifier. <laughs> B, uh, we don't want a mold problem and we're dealing with an enclosed environment. We're not growing outside. So the air and the humidity and things aren't gonna just balance themselves out magically, okay? So we've got it down 75%. It'll go up and down as temperature goes on. But the key here is that mushrooms and fungi do not drink the water in the environment unless they're literally sitting in a pool of water or something else like that. They just use it to keep moist. So 70 to 75% is just fine. Now, here's the other thing. This water is ambient. You're not spraying it. It's not spraying down on the fungus or anything else like that. It's just ambient. Don't spray your substrate. Don't spray the block directly unless you don't have an environment set up for that because you don't need to. The fungus has everything that it needs by the block, right? So, you've got humidity, that's all set. Now, temperature. If you live in an extremely cold environment or your house is very cold, you may have a seed, a seed mat. So a seed mat is just a little mat that you put down underneath a seed tray and it keeps it warm. And what happens is you put the seed mat down here and it warms up the greenhouse, done. You hook that up to a temperature controller and that temperature controller has a little probe and you don't need this, but let's say you do. Um, and it has it set to a balmy 72 degrees, right? That's how you can fix the temperature problem. But generally speaking, you're not gonna need it. Why? Most fungi uh, will happily grow in temperatures ranging from 55 degrees Fahrenheit to 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a massive range. And actually the colder your fruiting chamber is, 
the thicker the fruiting bodies, the more compact they are, because a smaller, denser fruiting body is more likely to survive in a cold environment in the wild. So, don't deal with temperature right now. You ain't gonna need it. So, we're back to this, a perlite tray. What's a perlite tray for? <coughs> perlite, here at the bottom, is actually to catch the raindrops or condensation that falls down from the humidifier. So basically, if you've got this set to 70 to 75 percent, there's going to be drips and drops and things like that. They're going to, it's going to happen. And so what you want to do is you have something down here, a little tray holding some perlite that catches those drops. And then if if it gets too dry, the perlite has a nice property where it will actually release the moisture it's trapped in a, an environment that's too dry. So, what you what do you have? You've got a little indoor plastic greenhouse or a tub or something else like that. It's got some humidity. If you're using a tub, you can use a spray bottle and just mist the inside of the tub and or the lid, whatever you want. Um, and that's it, right? So, Let's talk about problems. Number one, there probably isn't enough airflow here at the bottom. Let's be honest. Um, fungi and mushrooms love oxygen. It doesn't matter what species they are. Some deal better with high CO2 and for pinset you want high CO2, but for a good blossoming fruiting body, you want air, otherwise they get leggy. They get really tall, they get stringy, they don't, mm. um, So how could we fix this? Well, we could cut a hole and put a little fan there that just pulls the air out very, very, very gently over time. And so what'll happen is that the humidity comes up in the top, falls down, and then you have this little fan and it pushes the air out. Done. What else does this help with? Contamination. By pulling the air out of the tent, you have less likelihood of spores and contamination and mold and everything coming out of this environment and falling down and uh, taking hold here and sporulating. Right? So this is the Martha, right? This is your most basic growing environment. Now, in part two, we'll talk about our tent. <laughs>